Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. This is your host, Vivian S. D. Guzman, and welcome to My Spiritual Money Rx. Today is a very, very special day, as usual, just because I am going to give you a sneak peek of what truly happens when I bring my clients to a special place called Sedona for a healing retreat. So I'm going to share with you the same spiritual facilitator that we have over there in Sedona. His name is Jeff Schlicht. And I'm also going to share with you some clips on what we have done this last September when we went to Sedona for our own healing retreat. Because in January, as we open the new year for a brand new year 2021, my wish and my goal for you is that you can be in alignment with who you truly are meant to be. And so I'm opening up a beautiful Sedona healing retreat wherein we go to different parts of Sedona and experience what vortex healing really means. And without further ado, I would like to introduce to you our very special guest, our spiritual facilitator, Jeff Schlicht. When we go to Sedona, you're going to meet him there and you're also going to experience his own magic. So, hi, Jeff. Welcome to the show. <laughs> hi, Vivian. So nice to see you again. Nice to be I here. Know. I love, I love, love having you around. And you're just such a beacon of light for me and my group. And so I wanted Thank to you. honor that, honor Thank you, you. Thank your you. gifts and talents. And I know you're a pastor, right? Um, so share with them a little bit of your uh, your credentials. Like what, yes. what makes you such a great Spiritual facilitator, <laughs> you are just such a good beacon of light for all of us as well. Probably, probably my biggest teacher was the spirituality of hard knocks. <laughs> <In life. laughs> but um, the RSVP after my name is Religious Science Certified Practitioner, and my license is anchored at a uh, church in Long Beach, California, called Namaste Centers for Spiritual Living. And here in Sedona, I maintain my license with that organization, but I am also tied to Unity of Sedona and support Michael Murdad and his teachings. I'm the lead chaplain here. And just recently, and I'm not even sure I shared this with you, is one of my great teachers um, that taught me a great deal. She, her name was Joanne Bourgeois. I just love saying her name, Joanne Bourgeois. She passed. And um, she was the lead chaplain at Namaste Center for Spiritual Living. And they have asked me to also, so I'm also dual lead practitioner in Long Beach, California, as well as lead chaplain here in uh, Sedona. And so my ministry is to support both ecclesiastical wings of both, both centers. And, um, you know, what came to me is, it's the same language. It is um, me showing up doing what um, I continually expand on knowing and um, um, applying it for both organizations and your support and anyone that comes forward. It's the same language, you know. So it's I'm gifted by this work wherever it can be. And I'm... Uh, I'm grateful for it. Yeah. Our spiritual facilitator, and you're helping me lead this group of women, sometimes men as mm -hmm. well, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we go and explore the different parts of Sedona. So I remember the last time in September when we were there, we went to three different places, of mm -hmm. course, with your recommendation, and that was really helpful. Uh, and the other places we've been, I, I've been there in the past because of a shaman who recommended that to us. And it's been fascinating because when we're in Sedona, we not only clear our own energetics, right? Our chakra yeah. system. And that's what we're going to feature today when you took us to this special lake. And we had almost, for some people that are Christians, it almost feels like a baptism. Yeah, very much, very much so. Yes. <laughs> right? 
right? Yeah. And at the same time, aligning us with our higher selves so that we can actually do the work we're meant to do. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. share with us a little bit of this place that we're going to feature. Uh, what's the name of the lake where you took us the first day in Sedona? It's a creek. It's a creek. So it's a creek. yeah, it's, it's moving water and it's called Red Rock Crossing uh, or Crescent Moon Ranch. Actually, I, w- I went for a long walk there yesterday. It's one of my favorite places to be. Um, very, very anchored. It's one of the vortexes. It's male energy coming in, just grounding and anchoring. Um, and what I learned from Oak Creek in first visiting before I moved here is I was in corporate. I was CEO, CFO. And, you know, when you when you go someplace and you just want to, shake off all the activity of your job in order to anchor in the relaxation. What I learned once was I actually got in the water, not swimming, but just ankle deep. And I truly believe these waters are healing and that all the negative energy just pulled out of me almost like a siphon. Therefore, resetting me in order for me to move forward in my week without the heaviness and the burden of um, work with work. So what we did the last time was basically um, each an individual one, and it was very much like a baptism. Um, We got in ankle deep and um, I placed my hand on their heart and supported in their back and we, just did an individual short meditation of allowing and letting go of those things that don't serve us to our highest good. Just letting those things go. And um, yeah, it's it's a lovely grounding area where we went. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. And then we actually went in another place similar or, or I guess adjacent to that wherein we started building our dreams, right? Like how we wanted our lives to look like. And that was also powerful for a lot of us. Even for me, when I went there, I did a lot of crying. (laughs) So all these emotions flow. Um, Sometimes you don't even know that you're going to have them because you have them anyway. You have them inside of you. And for you to allow, right, nature to support you in our journey that was yeah. beautiful. It was it was so beautiful. And I remember even Sarah was crying so much throughout the whole journey. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever kind of release you, yeah. you need, right? That's what your body, your spirit is looking for. You actually get that. Right. Um, you know, and, and when, we, when we step into change, and, and that's what you're coming for, you yes. know, that how did life get to be the way it is? Mm. Because then we can see right where we are now. What do we want? And then um, we know that there's a change coming and any kind of change, a move or change in how I do things, um, a death, you know, a separation, anything like that. It's Mm -hmm. a place where there's grief. So that's where the tears come in of releasing and letting go. Yeah. Wow, that's beautifully put, Jeff. Thank you for that. And it's so true. I think we all experience a birth or a death of certain things. So even in our business, and I've seen that time and time again, that I have, so people ask me, why do you move so fast? How come you're so quick in, you know, making decisions and changes in your business? It is mm-hmm. because I respect whatever process is happening, let's say to a program that I have, right? Mm -hmm. There's a beginning when you're so excited creating it. And then there's the in between where in your, you're getting either failure or success, depending on how you look at it. And then there's a time sometimes to just retire the program because it no longer works. Yeah. Makes sense. And what I love about Sedona is that it almost gives you the, the birth and the death all at the same time. And it gives you such clarity on where you're going. Yes. This is where I first met the shaman. My friend Marie took me there and I was crying like crazy. And I'm thinking, is this place making me cry all the time? (laughs) Not for everyone, right? So everyone 
processes differently. That's what I've noticed. So some people, um, oh, well, I'll, I'll just share what I felt. Like when we're driving there, so I've flown there and I've driven there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there there's like a place where in it shifts and you just feel quiet like your mind is so still you know how we have this recurring thought patterns and almost like a loop you can't stop it yes yeah. suddenly when i went to sedona as i was driving or i was the passenger it just suddenly like shuts down like how, how come i'm not thinking that like you're you're almost looking for a thought but you don't have it because you're so quiet right so i feel that peace when i go there that's why i keep on coming back yeah, yeah but it, <laughs> it, every year <laughs> almost it, it is a place at peace you know it's a place where you take a breath you know yeah. and and we get so busy in our life you know and um one thing that i always stress is it's not how we do our life and how we do our business that yeah. we live an uncompartmentalized life mm -hmm. because somebody once told me that if if you look at your wallet mm -hmm. how i do my money is how i do my life is it orderly? <laughs> is it big bills down to small bills is it just all crumpled up that yeah. will tell you a lot about, <laughs> about <a> your <laughs> life <laughs> you know it's a little scary but oh, you know when, when yes. you enter into sedona there's a sense of it's stillness, you know, in, in uh, spirituality, you'd call it that still small voice within you that shuts down the, the chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, so those, um, those ideas, those intentions, mm -hmm. the patterns, it's the quietness that you get to observe mm -hmm. your life. And then you get to pick and choose what you want to carry with. What are the strengths? you know what 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 am i observing and witnessing of my own life and how do i want to step forward with some of it and without some of it yes yes yeah it's the attachment right we're so attached to what we had or what we have sometimes that we we think that that makes us us when it's not yeah. like we came out of this world naked baby crying wah, wah, right like and then suddenly we have all these additional things yeah. which we think make us better we're not no no we start out <laughs> we start out like perfect <laughs> and then we go through this cycle of like um not really screwing us up yeah but we start to create belief systems within ourselves mm -hmm. and it's those belief systems of what I place within here, I, I put my beliefs here mm -hmm. through the stages of life and my experiences. Now it's the beliefs that I have here is how I see and know the world. How I see and know the world is how I then step into it. Am I, a, am I living in a fearful world? Am I living in an expansive world? You know, those are the beliefs we have. There are no limitations in life at all, yes. except for those that I've put on myself. Ernest Holmes, who was the founder of religious science, would say, there's only light. Yes. The only shadows that are within that light is, is my shadow and, and what I'm blocking the light from. That's where I want to lean into because that's where the key is to unlocking mm -hmm. um, where there's only light and only freedom, only stepping forward. You know, that's where the learning really takes place. Yes. And, and I'm so grateful for you, for Harriet. Ugh, you guys have been, um, I think, my, my cornerstone in Sedona, so to speak. And I appreciate how you really helped my group. Uh, in the beginning, of course, it, it was me trying to figure it out, right? Who am I going to connect with? And we, yeah. we really connected with with the both of you, you and Harriet, uh, since we started. It was, yeah. what, five, six years ago when we started this um, Sedona Vortex Healing Retreats. And yeah. every every group, so to speak, has a theme, has a flavor. Mm -hmm. so they've always helped really open their eyes, open their mind to what else is possible. And then, of course, yeah. when we come back, we're just – differently magical people now like 
totally different <laughs> than how we started. So I really appreciate you, and I'm so grateful for you and Harriet for allowing our group um, to partake, right, of all the gifts, your store, everything. It's yeah. it's magical for us. It, so <laughs> it is. It is the same thing for us. And you know, we, you and I, Vivian, can may have a plan as we step into it, but. Mm -hmm. How, whatever the seasoning, whichever individuals that you actually bring, bring in, yeah. it's always its own unique flavor. flavor. Yes. And how it steps forward because someone always brings something that's perfect and right for the whole group. And that's how and that's how it unfolds. It's yes. lovely. Yeah, we're so grateful. We invite you to this magical place, right? Because we're going to go back again, like I said, January 4th to 6th of 2021. I thought, you know what? With all this chaos going on in the world, mm. and, uh, with my third eye looking at the what it looks like, the landscape, there's a lot of unrest within a lot of us. Mm. Um, I can feel it because I'm very empathic. I can see the energy. And it's a bit crazy for the next three months, FYI. <laughs> And I said, what's going on with the world? However, we are entering next year, right? In Chinese calendar, it's called the year of the ox. So that's the reason why change is, is imminent. Because every single year, even the Chinese calendar changes. Yes. The new year changes. The numbers change, right? Because we're, we're getting a year older. Mm -hmm. So what I tell and encourage people is to welcome change. Because that's the only thing constant in your life. There's really nothing constant. I mean, right. unless you drink coffee exactly at the same time, same day. Nobody, I haven't met anyone like that because every day really changes. Right. And so I, I encourage you to welcome change and this time look at it differently because mm -hmm. obviously when we go to Sedona and hang out with Jeff and Harriet and all of us that's going there, there's a part of us that want to change. And if we can let go of what no longer serves us, this yeah. will facilitate that for you. It's very, very healing, right, Jeff? It's absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's the environment itself. You know, they said God worked at the Grand Canyon, but when he was done with work, he went home to Sedona. So <laughs> it is. A, it's truly a it's truly a place. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's stunning here, no matter what season it is. Um, and you know, I was I was I, I love to read, and I was reading the Untethered Soul, mm. um, author by the name of Singer, and <clears throat> chapter thirteens and fourteens all talk about because you were talking about change, yes. you know, how we build these little environments for ourselves, mm -hmm. these places where we feel safe, mm -hmm. and we get attached to them and isn't this wonderful, but we forget what's outside of those walls. And they spoke about a dog and that was in a fence, mm -hmm. but then the fence, they took it down, but he was still on a leash and the dog thought I was free. Mm. <laughs> but there was still a length to the leash that the dog found out. So we do the same things in our life right. and what kind of box have I created and change, you know, your, your statements on change are absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Whether we participated in or not, change happens every single day. Now, mm -hmm. when it happens big in the world or in our world, no matter if it's our, our microcosm or macrocosm, mm -hmm. um, if we don't like change, we are just climbing out of our skin, but right. to be attuned with, another book, The Way of Mastery. And I love this, that every event in life and those events that create change, every event in life are neutral. Yes. What I bring to them, whether I call them good or bad, right or wrong, yes. based on what's in, I've packed in my baggage, what I've come from, the experiences I've had. So mm -hmm. it's going through the things and experiences I've had in order to be able to breathe and go with the flow a little more mm -hmm. of it doesn't even have to be accepting change. I can still state mm -hmm. that I'm uncomfortable with this. That's yeah. telling the truth. But oh, then yeah. there's the capital T truth, which is your spiritual truth. 
Mm -hmm. that it changes and it's a place in between the two that where we can find comfort and um um yeah comfort moving forward with change therefore we can go a longer distance on that leash and not be bound in this little comfort zone that we've created for ourselves and in doing that not only do we expand our own vision in our life but also our businesses that's yeah. what you use Sedona to do yes it is a container for us to actually just allow things to shed off like whatever no longer serves us mm -hmm. so that we can create the space for the whatever next chapter we would like to create in our lives yes and it's magical so why don't we share with the audience how it looks like right on the very very first day this or sedona documentary um so let let's share with them what we did what you hear is not a group of rattlesnakes these are called cicadas. And tell me a little bit about cicadas. 